Welcome back, everyone. In this lecture, we're going to learn how we can read an Excel file with Python. So we are starting off our project of Excel automation with Python data modeling. This is the Excel file we are going to work with. I have included it in this section. Just go to the end of the section and download the source files. This is an Excel file called Income to Credit Score. There are two columns, one column for the income, representing a person's yearly income, and one column for the credit score, representing the user's credit score. So we are going to use this data and find a correlation, if there is one, between income and credit score with this data set. So our first step is going to be to read this data set with Python. So join me at the website colab.research.google.com. Here is where we can code in Python online. So we can just go to this URL and then you can log in with your Gmail account and you can get started coding in Python for free. You can create a new code cell and enter Python code and then you can run the code cell and that will run the code. So we are going to read our Excel file with Python here in Google Colab. Our first step is to upload the Excel file. So you can read the Excel file from the internet, from Google Drive, or directly from the project if you upload the file into the project. Just go to the folder icon and then hit this icon to upload a new file. Then the file will appear here under files and you can use the file in your code. And just note, if you refresh the page, you'll have to re-upload because this is temporary storage. So if you want permanent storage, then you can store your files online or on Google Drive as well. This is just the fastest way to upload a file and then access it. So now that we have our file uploaded into our Google Colab project, we can get started coding. The first thing I'm going to do is import the pandas library. The import keyword allows us to use a package inside of this Google Colab project. Specifically, the pandas package, which is a very popular Python package for working with data frames. It allows you to take a table of data and convert it to the data frame type, which has a lot of helper functions that you can use for automation. The pandas library is pre-installed onto Google Colab, so all you have to do is import it as so. Now you can use the pandas library to perform tasks such as to read an Excel file. So with the pandas library, the creators of pandas made helper functions such as read Excel, which you can access through the pandas library. Read Excel allows you to read an Excel file. You just have to pass in the name of the Excel file as a string. So it has to be in double or single quotation marks. Our Excel file is income to credit score.xlsx. Don't forget the file extension. So this function is designed to perform a task specifically to read an Excel file. It will take the name of your Excel file and it will look for it in your files. If you want, you can use a different path if you have your Excel file somewhere else. The function is going to find this Excel file and convert it to the pandas data frame type. So we can run this code cell to execute the Python code. The function does its task of finding this file and converting it to the data frame type. So below the code cell, we get a preview of what the function has done. The function has taken the Excel file and converted it to the data frame type. Now, what if we want to actually now use this data frame? Well, we have to store the data frame. So let's save the data frame in a variable called data. Here I have used the Python syntax or grammar to create a new variable called data. A variable is like a storage box that, where you can store data. I'm using an equal sign to assign a value to the variable. This means the name data is going to store the data frame that we have loaded. Now in order for these changes to be read or executed, 
I have to rerun the code cell. So if you make a change to your code cell, you have to rerun the code cell. You'll notice our preview is now gone because we changed up the code to create a new variable instead of just to perform a function. However, the effect is the same. We've created a data variable which stores our data frame. We can inspect that variable in Colab just by printing out the variable name. And there we can see the data frame. This is a pandas data frame, which means that we can access pandas data frame functions such as the info function. This is a function that is part of the pandas data frame designed to perform the task of giving you information about the data frame. In this case, we have the type of the variable, which is a pandas data frame type, the number of entries in the data frame, which is the number of rows, the number of columns with the column index, the column name, the non-null count, and the data type, followed by the overall data types and the memory or storage usage of the data frame. Awesome, so there we have our data information. So this tells me that we've been able to read our Excel file with Python because we took an Excel file and we converted it to the pandas data frame type. Coming up next, we're going to learn how we can reshape our data for data modeling. So don't miss the next lecture. Previously, we learned how to read an Excel file with Python. In this lecture, we're continuing our project and we're going to learn how to reshape data for data modeling. So join me back in your Colab project and we are going to continue. So for our data modeling, we need to define from our data what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. The independent variable refers to the features that are used to make the prediction about the dependent variable. For example, if you have a data frame such as we have and you have income and credit score, the income could be the independent variable used to predict the credit score. Also, if you have a data set of stocks, you can use features about the stock like the volume as well as the previous returns of the stock in order to predict the stock's price tomorrow. So we have the independent and the dependent variables. This is the same thing from math or linear algebra x and y variables where you have y equals x. x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable because it's dependent on x. And then you might have some complicated formula to describe the relationship between y and x, like y equals 2x or y equals sine of x plus 5. So we have to define what is the independent and the dependent variable in our problem set. So the x is the independent variable and this is commonly capitalized just by convention. Our x is going to be the data at the income column. So in this way, we can create a new variable called x and give it the value of our data frame at the income column. We can run this code cell to create the variable. Then we can paste out the value of x to inspect the result. The result is we have this data series where we have the index of each item, and then we have the value at each index. So it's just a way to grab one column from the data frame. Now what about our y, the dependent variable? That will be the data at the column credit score, because that is what we're trying to predict. And again, we can paste out the value of y. So these two have similar shapes in that they just have 21 entries. But for our machine learning model, we will have to reshape x. We have to reshape x from this series into a two-dimensional array. This is just because that is what machine learning models expect for the shape of x. And you'll find that data processing, data cleaning, is a huge step in data science and machine learning. So I'm going to create a new variable called 
reshaped x. And I'm going to take the initial value of x and grab its values and then reshape them by negative 1 and 1, which means you convert it to a two-dimensional array. You can then inspect reshaped x to see your result. So we took x dot values, which we can display as well. X dot values just takes the series that we had and converts it to an array. But then we have to reshape that array into a two-dimensional array because that is what's expected by machine learning models. Then we can inspect our final shapes of X and Y. X dot shape was the original shape of X, but then we have now reshaped X so we can inspect its shape. So you see we went from just 21 entries to 21 by 1, which means we now have a two-dimensional array required for machine learning. Then we can also inspect the shape of our y variable, which is just 21 values in a one-dimensional array. So we had to reshape x from a one-dimensional array into a two-dimensional array, which means that instead of just being a list of items or an array of items, it's a list of lists, and that is expected by machine learning models. So that was some data shaping. Don't worry if you don't understand everything about data shaping just yet. Remember, this is just a preview of what is to come in the rest of the course, where we do a lot of data shaping, data manipulation, processing, cleaning, before we then do the data science and the machine learning on the data. So this is just a preview of what is to come. So now that our data is shaped, we can now feed it to a machine learning model. So join me in the next lecture where we will build out a model. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.